Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video to do with the SuperSocket 7 platform. These are the last graphics cards we're going to look at. I might do another SuperSocket 7 related video or two, but this is the last one looking specifically at graphics cards. I received a lot of messages and requests to look at these cards in particular. We've got the G400 Max for Matrox, a card from S3, it's the Savage 2000, a card from SIS or SIS, the 503, and then a very interesting card, this is from PowerVR with the Cairo 2 chip, the Hercules 3D Profit 4500. The Matrox G400 Max, I've done a proper review on this card recently. I put a link down below in the description if you want to find out more. The bottom line about this card is it's all about quality, excellent VGA output quality, excellent 32-bit rendering, but is the card optimized enough in terms of the drivers to be recommended for the SuperSocket 7 platform? The S3 Savage 2000. Now this is a card I haven't reviewed it yet. I have reviewed the previous model and S3 stands for excellent DOS compatibility. So those of you who are building a SuperSocket 7 platform and you want to focus on the DOS side of things, uh, this might be a card of interest to you. And in this video we will find out if this card is also uh, up to speed with the 3D games and if, if it can if it can keep up with the competition from 3DFX and NVIDIA. And this is the SIS 503, a real budget card back in the day. We will find out if it performs well enough to be recommended for the SuperSocket 7 platform. And a couple of you guys also requested to have a look at this card. This is the Hercules 3D Profit 4500 and this is based on the PowerVR Cairo Two chip, very interesting card. Tile based rendering is the keyword. Let's find out what this card can do. Okay, guys, let's have a look at some benchmarks. Here you can see all the specifications. Just hit that pause button and you can study them. Here are all the drivers, so for all the cards, and they are pretty much all from, from the same year, just the Cairo two drivers are a little bit newer. So let's go straight into GL Quake. So from the old cards, I just picked um, the better ones, the TNT2 Pro, the Voodoo 3, and the Radeon SDR. And then we've got the G400 Max, the Savage 2000, the SAS 305, and the Cairo 2. So here we've got the TNT2, the Voodoo 3, and the Radeon SDR. And here is the G400 Max. So not a not a bad showing up to 800 by 600. It's still on the level of the TNT2, but then it loses uh, a bit of performance. Here we've got the Savage 2000. Now look at that. At the 640 by 480 resolution, it is the fastest card ahead of the Voodoo 3, the TNT, and the Radeon. And then performance goes a little bit down, but at the same speed as all the other cards. So really impressive. Who would have thought that the S3 Savage 2000 is the king in OpenGL against all the other established players. So that was a bit of a, a surprise and uh, yeah, a shock to me. So there you have it. You always learn something new. Let's have a look at the SIS 305. Oh dear, all the way at the bottom. So this is not really playable to be honest. Um, so for OpenGL, for, for GL Quake, it's probably not the card you want to have. And let's have a look at the Cairo 2. Um, yeah, it, it, it is playable, I mean, above 80 frames. What stands out is how uh, it handles the higher resolution. So even going from 1024 by 768 up to 1280 by 1024, it hardly loses any performance. So um, this is a clear CPU bottleneck. So the K6 processor is obviously holding that card back because it can pump out the same frames at any resolution basically. Let's have a look at 32-bit performance, the TNT2, the Voodoo 5, and then the Radeon SDR. The G400 Max, I could not get it to run in the 32-bit mode, which was odd. I benchmarked this card in the past in this game and didn't have issues, so maybe it was a combination of uh, certain things, but I just 
it just didn't work for me. I got an error message. The Savage 2000, once again, look at that at 640 by 480, faster than the 3DFX and NVIDIA cards. And then it loses uh, a bit of performance and at the higher resolution, it ends up being behind the uh, Radeon and the, uh, yeah, no, ahead of the TNT and behind the Radeon and also a little bit behind the Voodoo 5, but uh, still very impressive uh, performance. I would not have expected that. And here we've got the SAS 305. Uh, yep, this card is outclassed. It, it can't keep up. And here we've got the Cairo 2. Similar, uh, basically identical frames as in 16-bit. So this card is bored. It needs a, a better processor and handles all the resolutions uh, uh, quite well, to be honest. Quake 2, TNT 2, the Voodoo 3, Radeon, and here we've got the G400 Max. So a little bit faster than the ATI, which is actually quite impressive. And look at that, Savage 2000 destroying the competition faster than all the cards. Um, I don't know what to say. Um, usually OpenGL is, is, is the domain for 3DFX and NVIDIA cards. So, um, and I don't recall reading anywhere in my research that the Savage 2000 cards are awesome OpenGL uh, video cards for the SuperSocket 7 platform. So this is really uh, exciting news to me. And if you're an S3 fan and a DOS gamer, you now can be assured that the S3 is actually a really powerful OpenGL card, or at least a powerful card for Quake. The SIS 305, yep, bottom of the barrel. And then we've got the Cairo 2. This time it loses, uh, steadily it loses performance and the initial FPS, it's, it starts off quite low. So really, once again, the Cairo 2 not really optimized for the K6 uh, processor and uh, yearning to have a faster processor that feeds it. Let's have a look at Quake 2 32-bit, TNT 2, the Voodoo 5, then we've got the Radeon, here we've got the G400 Max, just a little bit ahead of the Radeon, which is awesome. And once again, the Savage 2000, faster than all the other cards in Quake 2, 32-bit, very impressive. Then we've got the uh, SIS 305 at the bottom of the leaderboard. And here we've got the Cairo 2, pretty much same performance as in 16-bit. Definitely needs a faster processor uh, to get going. Let's have a look at Direct 3D. We've got the TNT 2 Pro, the Voodoo 3, here's the Radeon, and the G400 Max. And look at that, that is really impressive. The G400 Max, faster than all the other cards, and that is really something I found with the Matrox. It is a DirectX card. Uh, Matrox made this card around the DirectX 6 specifications and made sure it was fast. It's not the best card in OpenGL, but if you're playing Direct uh, X, Direct 3D games, the G4 Max is an awesome card. And it also draws lovely 32-bit colors and has an amazing VGA output quality. So there's lots of good stuff uh, to talk about the G4 Max. Let's see what the, where the Savage ends up. Oh dear. So either it's it's... Either it's just this one game, and the game actually has uh, errors. It, it's not rendered correctly, and I put some video footage in there so you can see what's going on, and the performance is terrible. It's not a VSync issue, so you might be thinking, oh, that's um, VSync is not turned off, but VSync was turned off. Um, it's just an issue with this game. Uh, whether or not other games work better, uh, please test, please find out. I just ran out of time to do any extensive testing. Um, a real shame. Uh, but at least in OpenGL, the Savage 2000 did really well, and hopefully this is just an isolated case. The SIS 305, again, not performing well. And here we've got the Cairo 2, look at that. So compared to OpenGL, the conclusion is now a lot different. It's hanging in right there with the top cards. So in this game or in Direct 3D, the Cairo 2 seems to be a lot more... Um, processor optimized, so it doesn't seem to need such a fast processor. Let's use 32-bit colors, uh, 32 -bit colors the TNT2 Pro, the Voodoo 5, we've got the Radeon, G400 Max, once again, fastest card, but going up to 1024 by 768, it does lose a bit of performance, and uh, the Voodoo 5 and even the Radeon can uh, squeeze out a little bit of a lead. The Savage 2000, once again, um, it uh, has errors when rendering and it's slower. 
here we've got the SIS 305 and then the Caro 2 doing really well it's like the uh, third third fastest card in this game and at the high resolution it's only beaten by the Voodoo 5 which is a very very uh, impressive accomplishment what else have we got DOS benchmarks let's see if there's anything interesting to uh, talk about the main thing is we've got two um, slower cards in DOS the Caro 2 and the SIS 305 all the other cards do well in PC player bench let's see if the same thing happens yep those two cards are a little bit behind um, 640 by 480 let's see if there's anything interesting oh look at that the Cairo 2 is the fastest card in 640 by 480 very interesting so that's definitely something to uh, check out and not quite sure what's going on there but um, yeah it definitely stands out that this card is so fast in 640 by 480 let's have a look at Doom I don't think there's too much that's gonna change um, yeah so here the SIS 305 loses some frames but the Cairo 2 is uh, pretty much up there with all the other cards and in Quake, let's see if there's anything interesting to see. Yeah, same story. The Cairo 2 and the SIS 3 or 5 are a little bit behind the rest. Okay, so you've seen the results. Let's spend some time talking about each graphics card in a little bit more detail. First up, we've got the Matrox G400 Max, and this card does really well. The quality of the VGA output is amazing. It is really reference standard. The 32-bit color quality is also uh, very impressive. It has one of the best uh, render qualities that you can get. In terms of performance, uh, this card is all about DirectX. It's a really good DirectX 6 card and you shouldn't have any problems playing DirectX 6 games. And as we saw in incoming, it also performs very well. The issue with OpenGL, look, not quite sure what was going on. I have uh, tested this card previously and it uh, completed that benchmark fine. So maybe it's just a combination of the driver and the motherboard I was using or something else. Sometimes uh, things just go wrong. But yeah, definitely also worth considering for the SuperSocket 7 platform. No doubt about that. DS3 Savage 2000, really good choice for the DOS gamers out there. Excellent compatibility and very fast as well. Surprisingly, this card is faster in OpenGL compared to NVIDIA. Now, that's something I would have never guessed. NVIDIA is usually the king in OpenGL. Uh, well, and so is 3DFX, especially with the mini GL drivers. But look at that, it was faster than the NVIDIA card uh, and the 3DFX card in some of the OpenGL tests, very surprising. Bit of a bummer that it didn't do well in the uh, DirectX game, the uh, incoming, and had some graphics glitches and the performance also suffered. But look, it's just one game, so you should definitely do some more tests uh, to find out what's going on there. So if you are mostly a DOS gamer and you're going to build a SuperSocket 7 machine to play DOS games and have the flexibility with disabling the caches to hit that 386 and 486 uh, performance point to play some of these old games, the Savage 2000 is an awesome card to consider and you can install Windows 98 and play a few 3D games as well. So very interesting card and I can definitely recommend you to check it out. And here we've got the SIS 503. There's not much too good to say about this card. Um, it performs horribly and it's got a lot of issues to do with the uh, colors, the gamma and the black levels are totally off. The driver is also extremely minimalistic so you have to use third-party tools to control anything. So basically, really, uh, that was more a novelty card, so to speak to uh, show you how bad some of the other cards out there can be. So yeah, I would not consider that card uh, for the SuperSocket 7 platform. And last but not least, PowerVR represented by the Cairo 2. Very interesting card. Performance is top notch, a little bit behind the competition, but very stable at higher resolutions. So it doesn't lose uh, much performance. So this is a card you can use and crank up the resolution. It also has decent drivers with vSync options and, op and other options for uh, texture filtering and uh, anti-aliasing. So um, yeah, 
look, this is the very first time I've used this card, so I've never tried it before. And it turns out it, it's actually not a bad choice for the Super Socket 7 platform. Would I pick this card over uh, 3DFX and NVIDIA? I probably, uh, probably not, but um, in the end, that's your decision. And maybe there are some uh, cool games or demos that run well on the Power VR. I, I simply just don't know enough about this card, but I do know it's uh, got a special, special place in history. And um, if you're a fan of Power VR uh, or you want to check out something unique or build a system that most people uh, don't have, then hey, this might be the card for you. And that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching and also thanks for being uh, patient and uh, letting me do all these Super Socket 7 videos. I actually find it uh, a lot logistically and, and also mentally uh, quite easier to stay with one topic. So hopefully I can continue uh, in that fashion because in the past I jumped between uh, projects and projects and I found that actually very a lot of work because you, you have to pack everything away and then uh, put a new project on the test bench. So um, that's something I can definitely see myself uh, doing uh, in the future, but hopefully not overdo it. You know, there's no point in doing uh, a certain topic for for three months or something like that. Um, as always, keen for some feedback in the comments. Uh, if you had any of these cards in, in the past, share your experiences, share your memories, because as I said, uh, a lot of these cards I haven't used before, so uh, m me testing a few games is not really representative most of the time. It's just uh, my take on these things. That's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.